It was a movie that took a funny twist into a, an entirely different thing. All of us who've worked in films, either as an actor or as a producer or a director, you know that movies can go in quite a crazy direction and, and not, not at all what you signed up for. <laughs> Traditional Westerns are something that a lot of us grew up with. Uh, when you think about non-traditional Westerns, Blazing Saddles is the first thing I think of. But there are some others, and we used to call them acid Westerns, trippy Westerns. But the real term, I guess, the uh, appropriate and accepted term, is a counterculture Western. And one I remember seeing starred Don Johnson and John Rubenstein, and it was written by the Firesign Theater. The film was called Zachariah, and George England directed it, and it was strange, but it had some beautiful slow motion in it, had music, it had Belle Star like you've never seen her before. We have one of the authors, and he also had a part in it. He's got some great stories. Mr. Phil Proctor. Thank you very much. I really feel like a fish out of water in this wonderful <laughs> surroundings. But I got some stories. Uh, I, I did my share of this stuff. Uh, I think. Tell us about Daniel Boone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There I was, was one that he did. I was a, a cast as a French a chef who had to pretend he was the king of France in Boonesboro. And it was a great script and a great little part for me. And of course, the first day I worked with Fess Parker, the great Fess Parker, uh, we were in the stagecoach, in a soundstage, in a stagecoach. Rosie Greer was knitting, I remember. <laughs> you know, anybody worked that show? Rosie would knit it between, between scenes. And, and, and Fess is, we're, we're all standing around getting ready to do the shot, and suddenly Fess cuts an enormous fart really stopped everything. It was like the bells went off, ring, ring, on the sound stage, you know. And, and the sound man was going like, ow, ow. And, and so he takes off his coonskin cap, and he throws it down on the sound stage floor, and he stops on it. He says, damn raccoon, and damn raccoon. <laughs> it, was, it was then that I knew I was gonna have fun on this shoot, and I really did. So, so anyway. <laughs> and and uh, I never got to do a Western movie, per se, except for this crazy project, Zachariah. Now, Zachariah, <laughs> we were hired because I guess we were known for our, sur well, by then for a surrealistic sense of humor. So that, that was the, the era where we were asked to work with this director, Joe Massot, who had done a film called Wonderwall with music by George Harrison, and for some reason had been brought over from England to, to create this movie, which was going to be the first psychedelic Western. Mm -hmm. oh. A Western based on the story of Siddhartha, and, and, and you know, uh, representing uh, uh, two guys who become expert gunslingers, uh, but one of them is good and one of them is bad. Although I defy you when you see this movie to tell me exactly how that happened. Do you, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. how, how is it that Don Johnson kind of is dressed in black, you know, and John Rubenstein is dressed in white? Well, we, when we worked with Joe writing this thing in uh, 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 offices that ABC owned on Vine, we wanted it to be a standard Western with psychedelic and surrealistic aspects to it so that you you think you're watching it's like blazing saddles you think you're watching something traditional but oh strange things are happening and it's happening kind of in the new in the modern world as well masso wanted to cast as bell star Brigitte Bardot and he wanted to cast as uh, 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 the lead Zachariah John Rubenstein's part Bob Dylan Okay, and that's where we kind of came on board. Bridget Bardot, Bob Dylan, sign me up, you know. <laughs> so, well, it went through a slight transformation when Massot quit the movie. And our producer, George England, known for such projects as The Shoes of the Fisherman, you know, he became our director. 
So suddenly, this script that we're working on, which was quite zany and, and, and psychedelic and involved like a shootout between two guys with, where the bullets were slowing down because of their minds and were coming like very slow. You know, like a CGI movie with no CGI. We, we, you know, how are we gonna do it? I don't know. But we wrote all this great stuff. <clears throat> and then George took over and he kept saying, write the scene where Zachariah tells his father he's leaving the ranch and is going to go out on his own. Why? Because we want to know his motivation. So we wrote that f***ing scene so many times. We'd go in and he'd read it, you know, and he, he was the father, you know, he'd read it and he'd go, no, not yet. And, and we spent all of our time doing that. And while we were doing that, the movie got away from us. It just, it just went somewhere. So by the time we all, uh, the three of us, uh, uh, Phil Austin didn't want to go, <clears throat> but uh, uh, Dave Osman, Peter Berg, and myself went down to Mexicali, where, where the, it was, we were going to shoot the thing on the Laguna Salada near Mexicali, <clears throat> and we went down to, to put the finishing touches on the script. Well, we went out to see the sets one day, and the sets are totally surrealistic. They are, they're like big cutouts, you know? Uh, bells, it, it's just totally not at all real, beyond realism, not even surrealism, sub-realism. You know? <laughs> and, 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 and as we drove out there, George England was married to uh, Horace, Horace Leachman. Leachman. And of course, we, we were hippies and we were fueled by pot and we had got some great American, uh, some great Mexican grass called uh, la, la, la Alfombra, something like the carpet, the carpet, I don't know. We were, we were smoking the carpet, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, we, uh, it was, went on, and we were on the floor most of the time. So, so we, Chloris had never smoked before. So while we're driving out to th this location, we turned Chloris on and she took off like a skyrocket. The next thing we know, she divorced George and won an Oscar. <laughs> so legalized. In Clues movie, in and, the last picture show. In the last picture yes. show. Yes. How about that? So, so anyway, as we're driving out, now this is a, a desert and it's flat. There's a beautiful mountains, you know, those Western locations, the best in Mexico, Canada, you know, <laughs> good old America. Anyway, the Wild West, <laughs> Anywhere but in America. They used to do it in America, but not. Okay. So we're driving out there, and there's a crossroad in the desert where two roads are intersecting. And as we come up to the crossroad, we notice that there's been an accident. Two cars have run into one another at the crossroads. And there are two guys standing outside their cars arguing. Two Mexican guys. Two guys were driving towards one another or, you know, side on the crossroads, and neither one of them was going to stop and let the other one go through. <laughs> and they had an accident. So we go out, we see these sets, and we go like, oh, oh boy, this is not the movie we wrote, but uh, we're writing, we wrote a movie, you know, and we got our bananas foster every night at the hotel, so, you know, we got... <laughs> the next day they were going to do the first shot, which was uh, the, uh, the crackers played by uh, Country Joe and the Fish, mm -hmm. was uh, an inept gang of, of uh, stage robbers and, and, and crooks. Uh, they were going, to, uh, uh, going after a stagecoach, and the gag was that the stagecoach outruns them. Fine, it, it works, it's in the movie, but the, the way that we designed the gag was that the stagecoach makes a sharp turn in this one little canyon, and the, the gang rides, can't stop in time, right? And rides up the hill. I mean, it can't make the turn. Rides up a hill and finds themselves isolated on the top of a mesa. So they prepared the hill, you know, built it all, laid the shots out and everything. The next morning, they go out to shoot the thing, and the Mexican crew had bulldozed the hill. There, you can't shoot because there's a hill there. We get rid of the hill. Now you can shoot, you see? So, <laughs> so the gag looks different in, 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 the, in the movie. Uh, in general, what happened to that film was, uh, 
It became a film about why Zachariah left his father behind. It, it became, in a strange way, a gay movie. <laughs> when you see, first of all, they cast these two beautiful young men, wonderful actors, Don Johnson, John Rubenstein. John Rubenstein was Pippin on Broadway, you know, both very, very uh, handsome, young, uh, skinny guys. And, and so all of the stuff that's written about love, you know, like, you know, the hippie friendship and all that kind of stuff became kind of like, well, love, <laughs> hippie friendship, <laughs> uh, nice jacket. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Play with my fringe. And, <laughs> and, 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 the whole, and the whole trajectory of the movie kind of changed. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a movie of mixed blessings. There's some great music in it. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Dick Van Patten uh, speaks some lines that I wrote from a character called Ralph Spoilsport that I created quite wonderfully. And every once in a while there's a little flash of the surreal reality of the, of, of the way what the movie could have been. Were you given a part in it also? Uh, so I was, I'm a priest in, in one little scene and Bergman plays a bank teller and he's, he's uh, being held up and everything. But it, again, it, it, the, it was a movie that took a funny twist into a, an entirely different thing. Not, believe me, all of us who've worked in films, either as an actor or as a producer or a director, you know that movies can go in quite a crazy direction and, and not, not at all what you signed up for. So anyway, I am so proud and happy to be a part of this gathering. And I, I think we're gonna have to come back and sit in this audience and have some more fun with everybody because it's just been wonderful. Thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Rob Word. Thanks for watching A Word on Westerns. Each week we post a new episode, and all you have to do is subscribe right here. Click on this, you won't miss a one. Adios.